what's up? Corey Brenneman here. We're going into part two, part 2.5 of digging into my band through artery song, Grave. Today, we're gonna be looking at the guitars. I'm gonna be talking about why I did what I did, how I got the sounds I got, and how I mixed them. And if you like this video, there's gonna be a link down in the description that tells you how you can donate a couple bucks to me. Give me a like, give me a subscribe so that you can see when these videos are dropping and leave a comment if you got any ideas for things you wanna see. I've got some stuff coming up. So like I said, subscribe, you'll get a notification, hit the bell so that you, you, you see when these videos drop. So let's go ahead and dig in here. One thing I wanna talk about is the rest of this EP that we, we did, I tracked all of the guitars straight through amps and that is a lot of fun, committing in real time, making your guitar tone right then and there so that you don't have to go back and mix it later. It makes it quicker, it makes it a lot of fun searching for that perfect guitar tone in the moment. But for Grave, I had a different idea of what I wanted the guitars to sound like. It's less of that rock guitar sound that I wanted, and I wanted to go for more of like a, a synthy, really octaved sound. I didn't want to rely on pedal octaves. I didn't have a pog yet, which I do have now, which I'm putting to good use. But Levi tracked all these guitars really, really well. And we use Little Alter Boy, which is a dynamite plugin from Sound Toys. Free plugin. Shout out if you went to South by Southwest and got that for free. So yeah, that's what I'm using for all the octaves. And then we ran those octave tracks out to amps and reamped them. And that's what we have here. It's three mics blended together but I just sum them down straight into a mono track. So let's get into it. First thing I'm gonna do is just play this first riff so you can hear what we're gonna start breaking down. So it sounds great, really riffy guitar. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off all the plugins that I use for mixing these and just show you. This is the main guitar sound. So this is the guitar uh, with an octave blend, an octave down blend to get the really thick sounding guitar. And this one under it is no normal guitar DI, just octave up. And it's kind of bizarre sounding, but you'll understand why. And it's not just played an octave up because we could have done that. I wanted that like alien sounding pitch shifted guitar. I didn't want to quad track this. I wanted this to be one DI and that's important. These are a left and a right DI. It's not four DIs. They're just mixed differently. So let's start breaking down how we mix this. I wanted a little more 1K accentuate that pick attack and a little mud pull out here. Cool, cool. Next, all these tracks here got routed. They're left 17, right is 18. They're left and right counterparts to this, and they all got processed together. This is the sound. This is the EQ move that made the guitar sound the way I wanted them to. Really tightened up the low end. My room has this 2K, 3K, like just ice picky, nasty harshness to it. I've always had that problem. So I'm typically cutting this out, pushed a little more of the high end and then high pass, low pass as always. And then a little bit of 800 help widen the guitars out. And then this is super important. It helped clear up a little more of the like top end amp fizziness. So we're really focusing the guitars in. Now we got UAD SSL compression. I really like a VCA compressor to help guitars just punch through the mix. When they hit that first strum, just boom, punches in. I really love the way that sounds. I hear so many people tell me, don't compress distorted guitars. You're dumb, do it. It sounds awesome. And then the last 
last thing I did was on my Rhythm Bus CQ, we're, we are pushing out of these channels hot and we're gonna hit CQ hot because I want that saturation from CQ to distort. I want that pushed EQ channel distortion. And then a little more tone shaping here, a little more high end, cutting a little more of that low end out, helping focus this guitar. I want it to sound like a synth. I almost don't want it to sound like guitar because I want it to sound cool and stylized like that. So you can hear, it's really pushing into that. Let's add the low track. And what I did with the EQ was, I focused on this one part of the high that I wanted to cut through. So it's just a little of that high cutting through. The last thing I did in the effort of making this sound synthy is added a synth, why not? Sounds like there's a little bend to it, which is really cool. Tracks with the guitarist perfectly. So let's hear that together. Um, it sounds awesome. I wanna to move to the pre-chorus next. We'll come back to the verses because they're a little different in my mindset of how I wanted them to sound. All right, so this one sounds lightly pitch shift up. A little different feeling from the first part. Very similar to this first EQ, but a little different, a little lower. Trying to accentuate that octave up so it's a blend of the normal DI and octave up. Sounds cool. Now in the chorus, there is an actual quad track. We're gonna look at the main track first, play it in the mix for you. Straightforward part. This one's got a little more EQ to it. Something I wanted to make sure with this guitar was that it didn't interfere with the vocals at all. This song is very much about the vocals. I don't want to get in the way of the vocals at all. I want this guitar to sound fat, which is why when we reamped it, we made it sound fat. But you can start carving out some of this stuff here. You look, we cut a lot of this like low mid stuff out. You have this fat guitar tone, but you, you, you bring it back a little bit and you leave yourself room for the vocals to dominate the mix, which is what you want. And then, like I said, I quad tracked this. Everything up to this point has been tracked on my Schecter C1 baritone. It's got bare knuckle painkiller pickups in it, and it is a phenomenal sounding guitar. I wanted something a little different. All that sounds great, thick sounding. I tracked this other part on my Strat, my Fender Strat, bone stock Fender Deluxe Strat. I wanted a clackier sound. I really love with strats how you can get the uh, the in-between pickup positions. I love the way those sound. So here it is straight off the amp. So different amp, sounds really cool, really dark, really scooped. I mean, look at the CQ, even before we do anything, you can see the scoop here. So cut a little of that clackiness out and then low pass, high pass. When you're doing quad tracks, you want a scoopy sound. At least that's what I want when I do quad tracks, something to kind of sit, be a little fatter, be a little more top end than the normal guitar and, and fit its way into the mix instead of being separate. More VCA compressor, get that punch going. Get it to punch through the mix. You know me, you low, I love Little Radiator. I'm not doing a whole lot here, but a little more crunch. Yeah, let's hear these together.
both rocking an octave. This uh, rhythm track got the octave down. Strat's got the octave. Got that high octave, making it alien sounding. I really like that. I really like that. That's just big, and I mean, that's what I wanted when I did this guitar was that larger than life wall of guitar sound. Let's go ahead and talk about the verses. A little different idea for what I wanted these to sound like. Play it in the mix for you. I wouldn't be surprised if you never heard this in the mix. It's very quiet. It's a very synth forward verse. The vocal is also very forward. Played off the amp. This is also tracked with the Fender Strat. This was tracked into a deluxe reverb. So you can hear that slow modulation, low gain tone. It's a bendier part instead of like with the octaves, you want that rock solid octave. This, a little more play to it. It's cool. I wanted that, the chorusy sound. I don't feel like I nailed it on the actual tone itself. I don't know if I couldn't get enough with my pedal or what was going on, but we're gonna add one at the end. But let's go ahead and go through how I shaped this. Pro MB. With the Strat, like I said, you get that clackiness. This is kind of like an active clack protection. So you're, you're, you're pumping it down with the compressor as it happens, but you're kind of letting it breathe and letting it be, letting that frequency range be there when it's not. This is clamping down pretty hard, but. I did this little EQ here to help sit the guitar back more. There's a lot of high mids, so helping it kind of, you know, get back into the mix. I don't want this up front. And then Saturn, this is a, big sound for me. This is a lot of how I get my lo-fi sounds when I'm doing lo-fi stuff, is I'll use this middle band and solo it. Let's hear what it sounds like. So that's that lo-fi sound you want. No lows, no highs, just radio sounding. If I were to turn that off and play all of it, that's not what I want, which is why I think it's cool to create three bands and solo out one of them. So you're getting high pass, low pass through the plugin. I'm using old tape, pushing that top end up, but then we're cutting it off. It leads to a cool lo-fi sound. And you just leave it soloed and you go on your go on your way. I want to make it a little wet, a little wide. So I did it with vintage verb, no attack, a slow decay, no pre delay. So we're not looking for like reverb here. I want it to sound like we're in a room with this guitar. Yeah, that's cool. Then the last thing, like I said, I wanted a modulated sound. So I used this weird avid plug-in that comes with Pro Tools and just turned it on almost all the way off. So you're getting that old school phaser sound, which I think was cool. Again, this sits way back in the mix. So being weird sounding is kind of cool. kind of in, it's out. You can kind of hear it when it's at the top of that phasing. It's really cool. There actually is one more guitar in this first verse too. So just like a little ear teaser. So we'll see what I did here. Really wanted it to, to be lo-fi. I wanted it to sound old. So you can hear I got my Walrus Julia cranking out some weird vibrato-y stuff. Again, I want it to sound like it's in a room. A little farther away sounding this time, a little more wet to wetness to it. And when you make things stereo in Pro Tools and you want to pan it, it's really annoying to have to use both pan knobs to do it. So I found this free plugin from Flux called Stereo Tool, and I just used the pan knob here to do my panning, moved it, you know, basically 90% to the left here.
same thing, essentially soloing just one side of this. Old tape, gotta love the old tape, little EQ curve, making this, tightening up the low and more, making it sound old. You can hear that vibrato like moving the pitch. It's it's cool. I like it. it. Sounds old. Like I said, I keep saying that. This is just a print panned all the way to the right, and it's a delay throw. It's kind of barely there, and I'll show you in the mix. You really don't hear it much, but it's just a little more, a little bit ambient. This whole verse is very ambient. So yeah, verse two, we got another lo-fi part, but I don't wanna just do the same thing as verse one. I wanna change it up a little bit. Same guitar, same amp, Fender into the Fender. I'll play for you in the mix first. So we're a little more forward this time. Here we're panned off to the side doing a little something different. Here's what it sounds like right off the amp. A little more push this time, which is really cool. I think this is a really cool first guitar part. So let's start shaping it the way we want it to sound. I still want it to be lo-fi. One of the biggest things is I wanted that Fender sound, that really scooped sound. I keep saying larger than life, but it's true. So now we're gonna focus inward. We're gonna start that lo-fi sound with a little bit of EQ. Knocking out a couple of these annoying frequencies, pushing mids up, getting towards that telephone sound. Back to Saturn, here we are. I left this one a little more open, but still old tape, pushing the high end. It's just a little different sounding. A little more of that low end pushing through more SSL compressor on guitars. Whoever told you not to do it, they're dumb. Remember. I'm joking, they're not dumb. I, it's not necessary, but it's a little something, again, just that little wah, punch right through the mix. Loving distorting guitars, why not? Little decapitator on the end mode. That dark Neve sound is cool. Toned it down a little bit. And this one's just panned off left, and I didn't want to go stereo with this one, so I just did a little verbiage mono reverb. I get a little wet. Back in the mix. So you got these synthy verses, and then they, they it, this got a little guitar push to it, and then you hear you're gonna open up into bigger guitars, which I think is a cool, a dynamic between the two parts. So you're doing what a lot of people struggle to do, in my opinion, when it comes to music, is you're creating the dynamics in your mix without automating because you're you're using different tools like the guitar verse is tracked with the Fender Strat and it's tracked through a deluxe reverb a small amp and we're, we're making a little lo-fi so that when this next part punches in you're back to the Schecter you're back to you're back to that big doubled guitar sound and even beyond that we're gonna we're gonna kick it up even more when the pre-chorus is over and go into the quad tracked chorus creating those dynamics with your guitars. You can do this stuff without automating. Of course, I'm not saying don't automate. I still automated the song, but you don't have to rely on just volume changes for dynamics in your song. This is a cool way. This is a lot of the way that I like to, to, to set up dynamics in my song. To, to flow, you don't you don't want this just like straight line. You want, you know, down for the verses, up for the chorus, you know. This song doesn't necessarily have a breakdown, but we do have a solo. Let's go listen to the solo. I did something I, that I think is cool. First of all, I just want to hit on this. 
When we get to the solo, these are the rhythm guitar tracks again. Pushing these down a little bit. The rhythm's down two, the quad's down three decibels. Get them out of the way for the solo. You want your solo to cut through. I also have vocals during this solo. This is less of a less of a solo and more of a like soaring lead, but when we, I'll, I'll, let me play this in the mix for you. So Levi tracked this, super cool. Let's quickly run through the plugins real quick. Not a whole lot. We're pushing a little bit of that mid boost solo vibe here. Little echo boy, it's not much. I really want my solos to cut through. I don't like them too, too wet. Little distortion. Doesn't even sound like much. Stereo tool, again, I used this because I wanted this off center because we did this doubling thing. Just a little bit though, this is the main solo. So I wanted it closer to the middle. This one's pushed off almost 70 as you can see. Last EQ move, pushing that mid boost, that mid forward boost up a little bit. So if you listen to the solo, what I found was happening in the mix is because it's a it's cut on two strings. One string's always ringing the same note and, and it can fall into the trap of you're hearing that one note and you're not hearing the solo itself cut through. So we cut the solo and I, I thought it was great, but after mixing it, I was, I was having trouble hearing the notes. So what I did was I went back and tracked this myself later. And I'll just show you real quick. Little EQ, little plate. By the way, another plugin I got for free. Shout out Sound Toys. Shout out Chris Crummett. We met up at this party in Austin, Texas, South by Southwest, maybe like 2015. Ah, it's been a long time. Got this plugin for free, used it ever since. So not a whole lot happening here, but it's just single notes of what Levi played. Just the notes, not the rung out two guitars. And I just single picked them so that they cut and it kind of fades out. This is not a featured part of the solo. You hear it, it is a double, but I wanted this to be a backing to the main solo. So it's less stylized, it's more boring, of course. I love the way Levi played it, but when you play these together, that helps you hear the notes and gives you the two string vibey solo sound. A lot of old bands did doubling solos anyway. I will say it is not my preferred sound for solos. I like a solo to be solo, but it sounds really cool here. It, it lets us have the main vibe and have a little clarity to help push through. So yeah, that's the guitars for Grave. If you have any more questions about what I did, feel free to hit me up in the comments. Uh, I'll answer for you. I think I'm gonna do vocals next in this song, break down a little bit of what I did because it's different than how I've done other songs. This song was more of a pop-minded than, than, than the other songs in kind of a cool way. So I'll show you kind of some different stuff that I did on this song. Give me a like and subscribe so you can see when these videos come out. In the description, like I said, there's a little link where you can shoot me a couple bucks if you like these videos. I will see you in the next one. I've been digging my grave.